Hey everybody, it's Nathan Cool with Swell Watch on surfingmagazine.com. I wanted to give you an update on what's going on with the tropics. We've had, so far this year, we've had Andres, we've had Blancas, we went Carlos, and then everything went quiet. So where have all the hurricanes gone? Well, it looks like we are gonna see a pickup in tropical activity, so we've got a better chance of seeing some hurricane swells toward the end of the month, during the second half of July, definitely when we start getting into August and September. So why is this now starting to affect us during a very strong El Nino year? Why didn't we see a lot of hurricanes before? And how do we know that we're going to actually see more hurricane activity. Well, I got some of the details. Let's take a look. What we're up against now is what's known as the Madden-Julian Oscillation. It's uh, also initialed the MJO. And this is a cycle, uh, very typical. The oceans, the climate, everything has cycles, just like uh, El Nino has cycle. Um, the MJO has a cycle. It goes around the equator and it takes weather along with it. It uh, kind of influences convection, so the amount of uh, storms or the possibility for storms to form. And this graphic here from the University of Colorado uh, describes it very well. If you take a look uh, originally uh, during this example, we'd see maybe some stormy weather over equatorial Africa, over Indonesia, give it a little bit more time and that weather system starts to move until eventually in one phase that convection is going to be very strong over equatorial waters. And here we can see in the, the third phase here, for instance, it would be very strong over top of our neck of the woods where hurricanes would definitely be forming. So the MGO hasn't really been in a favorable position the last few weeks. It's been more of a, a high convective nature in the Western Pacific, but now when we take a look at it, this forecast by, by NOAA, they, they put this out weekly from the uh, National Centers for Environmental Prediction. We can see that in our neck of the woods here, we'd start seeing a pickup, this red or these stripes of red and white. Those both are indicative of tropical cyclone formation being either high or moderate. And the green is above average rainfall. So when we see this pattern here, we know that, yeah, we've got a pretty good chance of seeing higher than normal uh, cyclone, cyclone formation, tropical cyclone eventually then hurricanes. If we go farther out, and the, uh, the long range, we can see that near the uh, third week of July, that would also increase more toward our area of Hurricane Alley um, in the Eastern Pacific. So the waters are definitely abnormally warm. These are the sea surface temperature uh, anomalies across the globe. Here's the typical El Nino pattern that we're seeing. It's uh, very strong, still off of Peru with that tail kind of going off of it. We can see that also when we start watching an animation. These are just sea surface temperature anomalies. And we can see that tail that really starts to grow off of Peru. So that's still been happening, but the waters are definitely primed. So all that we need at this point, we've got extremely warm waters, great fuel for hurricanes. In fact, look how warm the waters are all the way up and down the coast, even up into the, uh, the Gulf of Alaska, extremely warm waters. So there's no cold water that would normally stop a hurricane once it would form off of, like say, southern Mexico and it would start moving north. There's really nothing in its path to stop it from moving forward. So let's take a look at where things are right now. This is today. And what we're seeing is there's a, a storm right here. This is actually TD4E. And uh, that coincides with when we take a look here at the MJO uh, discussion and their forecast. And a lot of that's based on that, yeah, they have seen TD4E form. But we're right in sync right now with the climate models and then also the weather models. So when we move the models forward in time, we start seeing also, watch this bottom part of your screen down here start seeing some formation right there. Boom, 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 and there it is. We got a hurricane forming. <clears throat> that would be about a fetch of, oh, about 25, 30 foot seas. This would be around Monday the 13th. Taking a similar course that Blanca did, coming up, hitting Baja, and not really bringing a whole lot of swell for Southern California, just a little bit of steep angled south, southeast. But that's according to one model. Let's take a look at some of the weather models and see what they say. They show something different. So we're going back to where that would be near Baja, according to the GFS model here, that hurricane would be a little bit farther to the west, would actually be entering our swell window and moving on this type of trajectory, that northwest trajectory, that means that swell would actually be angled at Southern California. And this would be out more toward around Monday the 20th. So a lot of difference on the models right now, what would exactly happen with any hurricane that would form. But what we are seeing is that, according to the weather models, 
according to the wave models, and according to everything that we're seeing on the climate forecasts, things are starting to come in line for seeing something pick up toward the second part of July. So that's how things are looking right now. The MJO has a big influence on what's going to happen as far as convection. And of course, that's the, the guns and the bullet, uh, excuse me, the bullets and the gun that would actually be uh, driving then the hurricane. So we've got all the warm waters. We just need the storms to form that would bring the hurricanes. This would be a kind of a saving grace in a way. You might remember from my last video that during an El Nino season, an El Nino year, the southern hemisphere uh, it tends to be quiet for swells for Southern California. The jet stream around the pole tends to strengthen, so storms don't get a chance to really drift northward and send southern hemi-southwest swells our way. So we might hit a very long lull uh, this summer, especially long lulls at time for, for the southern hemisphere swells. If we can get more hurricane activity, we've got more hurricane swells. A uh, big question that comes out though with the MJO, and we've got these warm waters from El Nino, uh, are they linked somehow? And there are study after study trying to show, uh, yes, there's a link. Some studies show that, oh, there's a link. If there's increased MJO activity in the spring, then El Nino could be very strong uh, in the winter. One of the things that is very interesting, though, is that the uh, Climate Prediction Center of NOAA did report in their last update on the MJO that they just saw on July 6th the strongest MJO signal ever since they started gathering records in 1981. So once again, another climate anomaly that we're seeing actually come to fruition. Uh, could be an influence on El Nino. We really won't have, have a really solid understanding of just exactly how strong that El Nino will be for the winter uh, until we get more into August, September, we start seeing it grow. Similar to like what I showed in my last video, uh, comparing it to 1997 to 1998. For now, we know that we're probably going to see a lot of increased hurricane activity in the tropics, so that means more hurricane swell possibly toward the end of July and definitely going into August. Well, that's it for about now. In the meantime, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, stay updated on different reports like this. I'll be also issuing a, an update on El Nino in the next few weeks. You can also follow me on uh, my forecasts, which are on surfingmagazine.com. Go to forecasts.surfingmagazine.com, and I do Southern California, do the report for that area. You can also follow me on Facebook if you like, facebook.com slash Nathan Todd Cool. And yes, that really is my last name. Well, that's it for now, though. So uh, until next time, take care, be safe, and smile in the lineup.